This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. It all starts on Squarespace with a beautiful template that you can customize to your heart's content. Or you can start from scratch, or you can move over from an existing domain. And on Squarespace, everything is just easier to manage. Once you've gone through the super easy customization process, there are no updates, there are no patches, there's no technical stuff that you have to deal with. And Squarespace also handle all of the website-y stuff, podcasts, absolutely, mailing lists, oh yes, social integrations, They've got those too. They've also got 24-7 customer support, just in case you've got a question. Look, if you're looking to start a business, pursue a dream, do it with Squarespace. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash highlight history to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. And thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring, and let's get into the video. On January the 23rd, 1897, Elva Zona Haster was found dead in her home, apparently from natural causes. Her body was discovered by a boy who had been sent to the home by her husband of only a few months, Erasmus Stribbing Trout Shoe, also called Edward. She had sent the boy to the home to ask Elva if she needed anything before he came home from where he was working as a blacksmith. When the doctor, Dr. Nab, came to examine the body an hour or so later, she had already washed and dressed it for burial, putting her in a high-necked dress and placing a veil over her face. Dr. Knapp examined the body briefly, but was hindered by the fact that she was cradling her head and crying and he wouldn't let her go so the doctor could examine the head and neck. When the doctor tried, she became violent, so he left, finding nothing substantially wrong with the body from the parts he could examine. And because he had been treating her for a few weeks for female trouble, he assumed the death was related, putting down the cause of death initially as everlasting faint and then childbirth, or more aptly, complications from pregnancy. Elva was soon buried, but not before people started noticing that Shu kept paying particular attention to her head area and would become animated when people tried to go near it. He also wrapped a scarf around her neck that didn't match the burial dress, but told people it had been her favorite, so he wanted her buried in it. In addition to that, he put things around her head, such as a pillow and a rolled-up cloth, telling people he was doing it so that she could rest more comfortably in death. Mary Jane Hester, Elva's mother, never liked Shu and was convinced from the beginning that he had murdered Elva, but as there was no real direct evidence known at that time that Elva had been murdered, the body was buried anyway. Mary then took to praying for around a month that her daughter would appear to her and tell her how she had died. Finally, after a month of this, Hester claimed that her daughter had appeared to her four nights in a row, telling her that Shu had murdered her by choking her and breaking her neck because she hadn't cooked any meat for dinner the night of her death. After four nights of this, Hester went to speak with John Alfred Preston, the local prosecutor. She told him of her daughter appearing to her and what the ghost had said. As you might expect, Preston was none too keen on her evidence, but went ahead and inquired of Dr. Knapp about the circumstances surrounding Elva's death. When he learned that Dr. Knapp was not able to completely examine the body because of Shu becoming violent, Preston went ahead and reopens the case. A few days later, the body was exhumed with strong objections by Shu and an autopsy was performed. Everything seemed normal at first until the doctors cut an incision along the back of her head and neck. What they found there was that Elva's neck had been broken, specifically in the first and second vertebrae. They further found that her windpipe was crushed and that there were indications of finger marks around her neck. At this point, it was clear Elva had been murdered and suspicion naturally fell to the husband because of his behavior after her death concerning her neck. But there was still no hard evidence that he had been the one to commit the murder. Indeed, one might think that her mother, who described exactly how her daughter had died before the autopsy was performed, might be just as plausible of a suspect as the husband. Further, the mother, known to despise Shu, may have intended to make it look as if he committed the murder in order to frame him. Later evidence, though, would strongly point the finger at Shu, and the mother was never made a suspect, as the townspeople generally believed her ghost story. What was soon learned was that Shu had been married before. The first marriage ended in divorce while Shu was in prison for stealing a horse. The woman, Ali Esteline Cutlip, also claimed that Shu was extremely violent and beat her frequently while they were married. 
Next, she married a woman by the name of Lucy Ann Tritt. This marriage ended after just eight months with the death of Tritt, reportedly under mysterious circumstances. Oddly, Shu also once boasted in prison that he planned to marry seven women in his lifetime. All this said, even with his previous wife's mysterious death and a record of abuse, there was still no hard evidence that he actually had been the one to break Elva's neck and crush her windpipe. As such, he pleaded not guilty. During the trial, the prosecutor attempted to avoid bringing up the testimony of the ghost, as it couldn't be used as evidence, so it would just be thrown out due to being hearsay. It also made Mary Jane Hester look a little crazy, hence her testimony against Shu might be invalidated in the eyes of the jury if this story were to be brought up. It was lucky for the prosecutor, though, that Shu's attorney thought along the same lines. Thus, he brought the matter of the ghost's testimony up while cross-examining Hester in order to make her look insane. Unfortunately for him, Mary Jane Hester's story was delivered with such vehemence and believability that the jury actually seemed to be buying it, and he quickly abandoned that line of questioning and dismissed her. Because the defense had brought up the ghost's testimony, and there was no objection from the prosecutor for obvious reasons, the judge decided to allow it and did not tell the jury to disregard the ghost's testimony. Thus, despite lack of any direct hard evidence, Shu was convicted of murdering Elva Hester and was sentenced to life in prison, though ten of the jurors voted that he be hanged. Shortly thereafter, a mob was formed to break Shu out of prison and then hang him, but a man by the name of George M. Harra notified the sheriff of the plan. The sheriff then took Shu away from the jail and hid him somewhere in the woods and returned to the jail and was able to disband the mob of around 30 men. Today, in order to commemorate the rather unique events, the state of West Virginia currently has put in place a marker near the cemetery where Elva Zona Hester is buried, which states this. Interred in nearby cemetery is Zona Hester Shu. Her death in 1897 was presumed natural until her spirit appeared to her mother to describe how she was killed by her husband Edward. Autopsy on the exhumed body verified the apparition's account. Edward, found guilty of murder, was sentenced to the state prison. Only known case in which testimony from a ghost helped convict a murderer. So I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, please do check out our fantastic sponsor, Squarespace. They are linked to you below. And thank you for watching.